Hi, this is Janet with Paper and Spark. Today I'm going to walk you through how to use the new and improved PayPal Seller Spreadsheet version 2.0. This spreadsheet is available for sale at paperandspark.com. Now, the PayPal Seller Spreadsheet is geared for those of you who do the majority of your selling via PayPal. That means you probably sell online, on Facebook, Instagram, some other social media venue, or some other online sales shop that relies on using PayPal to accept payment. Um, I personally use WooCommerce, and that is another big one that accepts PayPal for payment. Um, so there's lots of different places you might be using PayPal to use this spreadsheet. Now, you might be totally new to this spreadsheet, or you might have been using the original version, um, but I've recently updated it to include better expense tracking capabilities. So it's now very similar to the Etsy seller spreadsheet, if you've had any experience with that one. Um, I also added a sales text feature that's improved from the original version. And uh, finally, and probably most importantly, the spreadsheet now gathers data from PayPal's new and improved reporting system instead of um, the old PayPal reports that it was using. So it can get a little bit more info for you and make your life a little bit easier now. Your purchase of the PayPal seller spreadsheet includes the spreadsheet file for 2016 and 2017, as of when I'm filming this video at least a PDF guide with step-by-step -step instructions on how to use it, and this series of video tutorials. You can open your spreadsheet file in Numbers, Excel, or Google Sheets, and Google Sheets is free if you're looking for a free solution. For the tutorial videos, I'm going to be working in Excel on a Mac, that's why it looks like this, um, and it works pretty much the same way in any spreadsheet software that I mentioned. Um, it just might look a little differently if you're using Numbers or Google Sheets. So let's start out by reviewing the monthly summary tab of your new spreadsheet. We've got revenue listed at the top. This is where you'll enter all your sales from your shop. We're going to walk through later how to import your PayPal sales directly from PayPal. Um, and you can also manually enter any other sales in, from non-PayPal sources on these rows. You can rename them to be whatever you want. Um, and we'll also enter any refunds that you issue up here in the revenue section. Now refunds from PayPal are going to be automatically imported when we do our PayPal report. Um, but you can manually enter refunds from any other source here too. Just make sure that your refunds are always entered as a negative amount. Next we've got the expense section, which I've broken up into three categories. Selling expenses, product expenses, and business expenses. Some of these expenses you'll enter directly on the monthly summary tab and others are going to flow from these colored tabs down here at the bottom where you'll enter your receipts. Now in general on this tab the rows are color coded so you can see where each row is coming from. So um, the purple expenses for example will all be coming from the purple expense tabs down here. The white ones are ones that you can customize. You can rename those cells to be whatever you want and you would enter those expenses directly on the spreadsheet. Your blue PayPal fees and PayPal shipping are going to be directly imported from your activity download from PayPal that we'll cover soon. And uh, the same thing goes for these blue rows and these blue rows here. So next the spreadsheet will subtract your monthly expenses from your monthly sales to tell you your net profit or loss each month and then for the year as well. And finally you've got this blue sales tax section down here. This is going to tell you how much you've been collecting in sales taxes according to your PayPal sales. Um, and it also tells you some other important information. We'll cover exactly what these rows are doing at the end of the tutorial series. 
Now onto your tabs. These first few tabs, the yellow, pink, and purple ones are all for entering your expense receipts depending on what category you're trying to enter. And then these light blue numbered tabs are from each month of the year. This is where we're going to import your PayPal activity download CSV file every month. The easiest way to show you how to use your spreadsheet is going to be to walk through doing a month's work of bookkeeping tasks. So let's start by importing an actual report from PayPal and going from there. Now before we log into PayPal to download the activity report, it's important that I note that this spreadsheet only works if you have a business PayPal account. Only the business account will provide the reporting capabilities that we need for the spreadsheet to work. So if you're still using a personal PayPal account, I really recommend that you go ahead and upgrade to business. Number one, because it's free, and number two, because you get these better, much more informative reports to use for the spreadsheet. Okay, so step number one to get the report we need to import is going to be to log into your PayPal account. You then will navigate to the reports menu. And from reports, you can go to activity download. And you'll see this screen here about um, some options for downloading your activity download report. We're going to download completed payments only as transaction type. And then for the spreadsheet, I'm going to just do a monthly download. So I'm going to do um, November 2016 in this example. So I'm going to select the dates for November and then click OK. And then you want the format to be CSV, which is usually the default. So you'll hit Create Report. And after a few moments, um, you should be able to hit Refresh. It'll say In Progress. You can go back to your activity download um, and it should be available for download. You'll also usually get an email when it's ready. So you can click download to get your requested report. And then open, open your newly downloaded file in Excel, Numbers, Google Sheets, whatever it is you're using. All right, so here's my downloaded November activity download from PayPal. I know I keep saying the word download like 45 times, I'm sorry. But this is what it looks like. Now to import it into your PayPal seller spreadsheet, you are going to click this cell right here. Um, it is above row one, above the one in row one, and to the left of A of column A, you click this little box right here. See how my cursor turns into a special little black arrow? When I see that cursor show up, I'm going to click this box, and that automatically selects all my data in this, in this activity report. So now that it's all selected, I'm going to copy it. I can copy either by doing Control C or Command C on a Mac, or you can right click, copy, or you can even go to the edit menu and copy. Once it's copied, I'm going to navigate back to my PayPal seller spreadsheet and then just navigate to whichever month you want to import this data into. So in my case, it's going to be 11 for November. So now to paste it in, I'm going to click that same little cell, the um, box in between the A and the 1 that's going to select the entire blank tab and then I'm just going to paste in that data. So I'm just going to right click and do paste or you can do command or control V. Um, you might get an error message that looks like this. That's fine. Just click OK and voila all that data that I opened from the activity download is now in my um, PayPal seller spreadsheet on the November tab. So now that I've done that, I can go over to my monthly summary and see that I have some totals populated in these light blue cells for November. And that is because I just imported that data right here. 
So that's the uh, PayPal import right there. As soon as you do that, you have effectively entered your PayPal sales for the month, your refunds for the month, your PayPal fees for the month, your PayPal shipping fees, which is going to be if you buy any postage labels via PayPal, and your sales tax amounts. Now one thing that I want to note real quick about um, your sales totals from PayPal is that these are gross amounts, okay? That means they include fees, they include shipping your customer might have paid you, and they include sales tax that your customer might have paid you. Uh, so just keep that in mind when you're wondering what's included in this amount and what's not included in this amount. It includes sales tax collected and shipping collected, and it is not subtracting out any PayPal fees yet. We do that here, okay, on the expense line. Some other things to note real quick about performing your PayPal import. You might have some more questions about what's being counted in these blue rows and what's not. Um, first, I've set this spreadsheet up to hopefully capture all the types of sales that your PayPal system might report for you. These are going to be sales for your products or your services and not necessarily everything that is credited to your PayPal account. So that means if you receive a refund for an expense that you used PayPal to pay for, that refund issued to you, it's not going to be included in your sales section here because it's not really a sale. Um, you uh, Also, if you use a PayPal debit card and you earn cash back on that debit card, that's not going to be included in your sales total either. You might want to manually enter that cash back amount somewhere else in your revenue section, but it's not going to automatically tally in your sales. Also, note that transfers that you make to your PayPal account from your own bank account, whether it's your business or your personal account, those aren't considered sales. They're not even any type of revenue. They're actually considered owner's contributions, and they're not uh, noted anywhere on your spreadsheet since they aren't a revenue or an expense. As far as your expenses go, you might use your PayPal account to pay for lots of different type of business expenses, but due to the fact that they all have to be categorized appropriately, um, you have to go through them line by line. We'll walk through how to do that with your PayPal report later. Um, and the only one that the spreadsheet is set up to automatically total for you are going to be any transactions that are paid to the US Postal Service. So that's going to be your shipping fees here. Okay, so now that you've done your import, um, you've got your PayPal sales entered for the month that you're working on, and you should now enter sales from any other non-PayPal sources. Um, so I've got four customizable rows here in the revenue section. You can just click any of them and type them to be whatever you need. That might be craft shows, that might be um, your WooCommerce site, that might be Facebook sales. You can type it to be whatever works for you and um, enter any amounts here that are applicable for that type of sale. You can just type it directly into the cell on this monthly summary tab and uh, that's how you enter sales from other sources. You manually type them in. One other thing to note real quick as you're entering sales from other sources is that uh, PayPal is a form of payment in a lot of different places. Uh, so the import is going to sum all your sales taken via PayPal. That's going to be whether you invoiced a client directly or whether they checked out on your website via a shopping cart plugin and used PayPal. It's all going to be lumped into this sum here. So if you go ahead and enter sales from other sources, uh, like Etsy, Shopify, WooCommerce, Facebook, whatever, you want to make sure that you're not including any sales that already were included in this PayPal import. Just make sure that when you manually enter sales, you're not double counting something that might already have been included here, okay? Um, and again, if you have refunds via any other source, you can also enter them on and on this section you can make another refunds row if you want just make sure that refunds are always entered as negative numbers 
and the revenue line here, the total revenue line, is going to keep track of your total sales for each month and a running tally for the year. And that pretty much sums up how to use the revenue section of your spreadsheet. So in the next set of videos, we're going to discuss how to deal with your expenses and your sales taxes. Thank you.